In previous videos, I've been exploring how people have been convinced to let go of their God-given rights to fight for justice and decency. I've explained my position that by misunderstanding the Christian concepts of turning the other cheek and abiding under lawful godly authorities, many have been convinced to abandon the fight to maintain decent legal frameworks. And slowly, we've lost our right even to be represented in the governments Christian themselves played a key role in creating. But now I want to talk in more detail about the right and indeed the responsibility to fight to regain and maintain governmental self-determination. It all starts with the responsibility to protect the innocent. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. That's 1 James verse 27. It's one of the many very concise verses in the Bible that explain exactly what it is God wants from us. A lot of people spend a lot of time focusing on method for joining the church, explanations of the end times, what sort of music we should use at church, whether or not drinking a beer is a sin. And while the fundamentals of coming to Christ are definitely worth focusing on, it is interesting that when asked how to tell a faithful Christian, the Bible does not say. Ask them precisely how they were baptized. Make no mistake, proper baptism is crucial. But what the Bible says about how to tell a good Christian is, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. That's John thirteen thirty-five. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. That's Matthew seven fifteen to 17 What's the difference between good and evil? How do we tell good from evil? The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Galatians 5, to 24 We owe these things to the innocent, folks, to the innocent. These are the unquestioned rights of mankind. People should be treated this way at all times. And it is our job to do so and to teach and to train others to do so as well. Think about this verse in Jeremiah 6.14. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. They have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly. Is that not what we are seeing in the streets when law-abiding citizens are accosted by gays, and communists rioting? Are we seeing meekness and long-suffering from the far left, or are we not seeing treason? All of that love is in opposition to a nice list of what we're not supposed to do, according to God. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Galatians 5, 19-21. See all those words that we all recognize as evil? fornication, murder, strife, adultery. Look closely and see what else is included in that list. Sedition. Sedition in English means an attempt to overthrow the established order. But what is the established order? The established order is the order established by God, and even the Bible gives mankind credit for being able to figure out what exactly that is. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. The Bible even says even his eternal power in Godhead 
so that they are without excuse. Well, I have no interest in converting people to believing in God's eternal power and Godhead, but people know right from wrong, and all this arguing that we get about it is ridiculous. That was Romans 1.20. So when men say that one doesn't have to believe in God to know right from wrong, they're right. And you know what? when they attempt to overthrow the established order and incite sedition against common everyday decency, there's no excuse for this. They know what they're doing. And God's attitude that is not at all in question. Criminals have succeeded in turning justice on its ear and have committed sedition against God, the Constitution of the United States, and civilization itself by attempting to attack morality decency, correct behavior at its root. These folks have attacked everything from the death penalty to marriage and divorce laws to anti-porn laws to laws against having sex with animals in order to undo simple, observable, natural order. Bring about a centrally controlled governing institution that is entirely authoritarian, completely free of any moral, ethical, or even popular restraint making gods of themselves, declaring the actual God dead, and the opinions of all other men of no consequence, acting as if such a government is to be supported because God wants us to turn the other cheek and respect the earthly authorities is insane. These folks are not the authorities. These folks are the traitors, the insurrectionists, the seditious, and we have to resist them. Thanks again for watching Christian Labor. Please like, subscribe, comment, click on an ad, or donate from the banner of our YouTube homepage. Thank you very much.